Welcome to the JICC, the Japan Information and Culture Center here in Washington, D.C. We are so excited to be joining with the National Cherry Blossom Festival in 2021 for their Blossom Kite Fly. As part of this event, we wanted to introduce you all to some of the kites we have here at the center and talk a little bit more about the history of the kites. To do that, we brought an expert, Jim, from Wings Over Washington. He'll go more into depth about the history, how the kites are made, where they're from, all that. We hope you enjoy. Hi, I'm Tim Koska. I am the founding president of the local kite club, Wings Over Washington. And I'm so happy to be invited here by the Japan Information and Culture Center to be a part of this presentation. Uh, we're gonna discuss the history and the beauty of kites and their origins from Japan. The first kite came to Japan in the Heian period, 794 to 1185. It is said that when kites were first introduced in Japan, they were flown in Buddhist religious rites and only nobles had access to them. They became popular for entertainment among commoners in the mid 1600s. Kites develop along regional lines as geography, weather, materials that were available all dictated the kite's structure and appearance. Traditional kites are made of a washi paper that's a durable paper made from mulberry plants and decorated with the thick and thin brush strokes known as sumi a painting. Bamboo is the actual framing material used it's usually going to come from the bamboo plant and split down to the size that's needed. And also kites come in very, very many sizes from huge, gigantic ones that require multiple people to handle and some so tiny that they can be held in the palm of your hand. In Japanese, the word for kite is taco, but in some regions it is called hata or ika. Edo these kites, right here, known as Edo kites, or Edo Dako, are rectangular in shape, and they were developed in the Edo area, now known as Tokyo. During the Edo period, which was 1603 to 1867, much art, including kites, flourished in that period due to 200 years of continuous peace. During this time, the samurai class, having no battles to fight, occupied themselves and maintained their social status through the arts. Feudal lords of the day were required to split their time between their own estates and Edo, the capital. As a result, the rectangular Edo kite is the most representative Japanese kite. In Miyagi Prefecture, kites are called Tenmata, which means the flag of Tengu, supernatural beings who live in the mountains. In Osaka, they call kites ika, which means squid, instead of octopus. In Nagasaki, they call kites hata, or flag. In the Shironi Big Kite Battle Festival, Edo kites were taken as a framework and refined and changed to create odako, large kites. The yakodako is a common type of Japanese kite. Its feet are free from the bamboo frame. As you can see. While the other, that extra paper in its sleeves up here also create a billow for the wind to pass through. This particular design originated in Edo, now Tokyo, and a yako was a servant who went ahead of the possessions of samurai, carrying a lance. Here's his lance. <laughs> These kites were especially popular among the non-samurai classes possibly because they could be flown as a taunt to samurai. Flying the likeness of a commoner on high above samurais was said to be a way to gloat. Another theory says that because yako, commoners privileged by their place among the samurai, often took advantage of their position by bullying the townspeople. Flying the kite was a way of symbolically bullying back. Rokaku. This hexagonal kite was originally made in Sanjo, Niigata in the early Edo period 
as an alternative to the already established big rectangular kite. Rokaku is also called makidako, since when it's not in use, it can be rolled up and stored away without the spine. In the Sharoni Big Kite Battle Festival, Edo kites were taken as a framework and refined and changed to create makidako. Every year, the Sharoni Big Kite Battle Festival takes place. This 300-year-old festival is held at the beginning of June in Sharoni, Minami Ward of the Niigata Prefecture. There are over a thousand kites flown in a five-day festival. The kite battles are fought over Nakano River from both banks. There are two types of kites that are flown and used in these battles. One is called the Odako, the large kite, and the other is the Makidako, rolled kite. Odako is an Edo-style rectangular kite, which is constructed as large as 16 and a half to 23 feet tall. The Makodako is in a Rokaku hexagonal shape and about 10 feet between opposing points. It takes a year to make an Odako, starting from splitting the bamboo to finally painting on the kite, the washi paper. It takes three months to make the main rope, which is about an inch in diameter and over 400 feet long. This rope is made with Japanese hemp, which yields a long and strong fibers. The battles are fought between two kites at a time. Each kite is towed by dozens of strong men. The procedure of the battle is both kites are flown in the air from the two banks. They're manipulated so the ropes attached to the kites actually get tangled in midair. The kites fall into the river, and then the team and residents of each bank play tug of war to cut the opponent's ropes. The number of ropes each team collects from their opponent determines the winner. 